Hello guys and welcome to my January empties. What a wonderful So today's video is going to be about everything that I finished off in January, body care, candles, and I actually do have some book reviews. I'm going to start incorporating books into my monthly empties as in like what I've read through the month because I did re read four books this month. I'm almost at five, um, but I'm just having a really fun time with books lately and I just started getting back into them. Honestly, after college, I didn't really want to touch a book ever again because I had been so used to like reading textbooks and stuff all the time after just being in school systems for, you know, most of all of my life. Um, so I took a break from books, but I'm casually getting back into them and I'm really happy about it. So I'm going to give you guys some book reviews too, but let's start with the empties and then we'll do that at the end just in case you're not really here for any of that stuff. Don't worry about it. I'll leave that till the end, but let's get started with the candle empties. So as you can see, I have a little bit of empties, not really, I guess this is right about normal average for what I finished up in a month, but I do have three candles. So I think that's pretty good. I finished off champagne toast literally last night. It was so, so good. I love champagne toast. Um, the notes are bubbly champagne, sparkling berries, and sweet orange. Just my favorite scent. Um, it's perfect for around the kitchen area too. If you have any like weird scents going on, like if you just fried fish or if you just made like tacos and it's really smelly, this is a great one to get rid of those smells, but I loved it. It burned all the way to literally the bottom of the packaging. So this burned really well. It's one of my favorites. Um, I do have to say though, the, the packaging kind of melted near the end and that makes me a little scared, but yeah, I finished it off. Happy to have finished it and I will definitely repurchase again. The next one I finished off is from Goose Creek. This is Hot Cocoa and Peppermint. This one is from, I believe, 2022 Christmas. I did not pick this up this past year, but I did finish it off. It was actually pretty nice. Um, very artificial hot cocoa, which whatever, like that's fine. Um, but it was nice and it was warm and inviting and I'm happy that I finished it. It burned really well. Um, even though the wax like looks a little sooty, it really wasn't sooty. Um, they don't have the notes on here, but I think it was just like hot chocolate and candy canes. So it was good. It was fine. I definitely wouldn't get it again. I'm kind of straying away from Goose Creek. Um, I just feel like if I'm going to order online, I have to order in bulk. And that's not really beneficial for my candle collection right now because I like that it's at a reasonable size and I don't really want to contribute to that. Also, their candles are really hit or miss. So, and the last one I finished off is from Homeworks. How funny, I finished one from every brand that I own. <laughs> I finished off Blueberry Cheesecake from Homeworks. This one was so nice. And this is one of their three wicks. I have to say their three wicks actually work really well as opposed to their four wicks. They still work amazing. Um, the fragrance notes are Wild Main Blueberry Cheesecake Accord, Blackberry Jam and Brown Sugar Crust. This was nice to burn after I was like, really after the holidays up till now, like when I was just so done with Christmas scents, I went for this one and it was really nice to have something like fruity and gourmand. It was great and it burned super well, barely any soot at all. This one gave me no trouble whatsoever. Um, I definitely had to trim the wicks, but besides that, gave me no trouble. This was a really good scent. I would definitely pick up uh, Homeworks candles again if I find them at Marshall's again, because for me to justify an online purchase of candles, I'll have to buy like three or more and I don't wanna be buying candles in bulk anymore, so. So moving on to body care, I only finished up these two minis this month, but I did finish off the Fenty Skin Butter Drop in Warm Cinnamon Shimmering. In Warm Cinnamon, this is the Shimmering Whipped Oil Body Cream. It's hard to say that, that's a very long name. But I scraped the bottom of this because it was so yummy. This cinnamon scent was like a snickerdoodle on your body. And even though I didn't like the shimmer at first, actually like later on after I had been using this for a while, I really enjoyed the look of the shimmer on my body. It just made me feel so like girly and cutesy. So I loved this. Sadly, it is only like a holiday scent. So I'll definitely pick it up if they bring it out again next year, but it was so yummy and warm. And I smelled like a snickerdoodle and it was just amazing. So that one was awesome. And then I also finished off Vanilla Bean Noel in the um, mini body cream from Bath & Body Works. This is from this year. I really liked this one. Honestly, Vanilla Bean Noel is such a wonderful scent. Um, in the body cream, it is very strong and it lasts a long time. So I loved it in the body cream. I think every other 
um, fragrance type of this or every other formula of this has really degraded over the years in terms of like scent quality, but this one has stayed amazing. And then I was able to get through three, all three of my Christmas scents that I had been using at the sinks in my house. So really proud of myself for that. Um, I got through toasted vanilla chai at my sink in the bathroom, and this one is whipped vanilla, sponge sugar, and winter spice. This is my favorite scent from them in the hand soap. I love it. It's like it's just a a nice warm vanilla. I wouldn't say it's super chai-like, but it is just like a warm vanilla. Finished off Twisted Peppermint. I think this one was at the kitchen sink. I really liked this. It was like a nice clean smell. It's cool peppermint, sugared snow, and fresh balsam. Just like such a good scent and really cute in this pink packaging. And then Ryan finished off in his sink the Winter Candy Apple scent. Even though it's kind of like a pinky bottle, I thought this scent was really nice for him because he likes kind of fresh scents. So this is red apples, winter rose petals, and candied oranges. You guys know what winter candy apple smells like. It was really nice. And then I was able to get through one pocket back in blueberry crumble. This I think is from 2021, one of my favorites of all time. So I have a lot of backups of this one. And we also got through two wallflowers. I got through sweet whiskey in, I think this was in Ryan's bathroom. And then flannel was in the living room. And they're just great scents. I do have this little Scentsy candy cane buttercream. It was like a little snowflake and it was really cute hanging from my dash. It doesn't really smell anymore. It doesn't smell at my car, but it does sm still smell like buttercream. So it's yummy. I might just like leave this in my um, closet just to keep everything smelling fresh, but it's not really good enough for my car anymore. So finish that. And then I have a couple makeup items. I finished literally this morning my e.l.f. brow lift. I just have the clear one. This was really great. I used the um, brow lift little spoolie that e.l.f. also makes. And yeah, I really like this. And then also this morning, I finished off my Rare Beauty Mascara in Black. I think this is supposed to be voluminizing. It's amazing. Um, it's just definitely dried out now. Um, I don't think I'm at the like three or six month mark on this. I've only had it for a couple months, but it is dry. So I pretty much finished it, but I loved this. It was amazing and I would definitely get it again. I had a few trips over the last month and I was really focused on getting through some little mini skincare items that I had in my collection. So I was able to get through four. I got through the Clear Proof Cleansing Gel from Mary Kay. This one I like to use at nighttime. I have the full size in my shower. And then I had this little La Roche-Posay mini set. I think I have one more item from here that I haven't finished yet, but this is the Hydrating Gel Cleanser I got through. That was fine. Um, the Tolerane Double Repair Face Moisturizer, again, fine. And the Hylou B5 Serum. This was the only thing that I actually really did enjoy from them. I think everything else was just like meh. And then the last skincare item I used up is the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow PHA BHA Pore Tight Toner. This stuff is so good. I've used probably four in the past year. I finished one up every like three months. I use this morning and night. I love it. It is wonderful. It really helped the texture of my skin last year. So I totally recommend it if you're having texture problems. But just so you know, because it does have these acids in it, that's what PHA and BHA means. They have um, acids in it that'll make your skin a little more sensitive. So just be careful when you're using this with other things like retinol and stuff. Make sure you're using sunscreen. Just really don't use acids if you're not diligent and you don't read up about the side effects of using them. Just putting that out there because I know like the the Sephora kids thing has been like a scandal recently and kids don't really know what they're putting on their face. So just read up on stuff if you're using acids. Please do yourself a favor and read up on that before you start using it. And then I have the only hair care item I finished was the Love Beauty and Planet Sulfate Free Shampoo Scrub. I have like six backups of this. It's my favorite thing in the world and they stopped selling it. So I'm really sad about that, but it's great. In the shower, I use this. Um, I alternate between this and the actual shampoo every time I wash my hair and it works wonders for my dry scalp. Okay, moving on to my books that I finished in January. So I did get back into reading with the series from Sarah J. Mass. This is A Court of Thorns and Roses. This is book one. I actually finished this over the holiday break. So I technically finished it in December, but I'll just bring it up because it is the first one of this book series. And it's so good. Um, if you guys aren't a fan of fantasy, you probably won't like it, but I kind of attributed this to uh, Game of Thrones. So if you liked Game of Thrones, they had, you know, romance, they had war, they had battles, they had, you know, lies and treachery and drama. That's really what like this series gives me the vibes of, even though it's more like fairies than it is just magicians or something. Um, 
yeah, that's kind of the vibes that it gives me. So if you liked Game of Thrones or things like that, then you'll probably like this. So anyways, this is the first book of the series and this is kind of an introduction to the main character. You really learn a lot about her and about, you know, her background and you fall in love with the character. And this one is really kind of like a Beauty and the Beast kind of romance. So if you like, honestly, just give it a try. Some people think that it's really weird and they don't enjoy it, but I love this and it really made me just fall in love with reading again. So this was so fun. I think I finished it in a week, which is like unheard of for me because I haven't read books in such a long time. And this was about 400 pages. And then the next book in the series is A Court of Mist and Fury. And this one is following the main character again after a big change in her life. And this is Enemies to Lovers. So if you like that kind of vibe, then you'll love this. And it was a lot of fun. This one has more of the spicy scenes. I think this one also is kind of spicy. So, you know, just be warned if you don't like the spicy scenes, just kind of skip a little bit. I was reading this first one on the plane on a trip and I just skipped through the spicy scenes. So just so you know, yeah, I didn't enjoy that on an airplane, but reading it at home alone is totally fine. But anyways, yeah, this one was really juicy, just super juicy, um, very slow burn. And it was like agonizing how slow it was, but it was so worth it. So this one was amazing. And then this third book is really where that kind of Game of Thrones thing comes in, like lies, treachery, kingdoms, um, battles, just like everything is here. And it, I think Sarah J Maas really does it well describing warfare and kind of like how it makes people sick. Um, I really enjoy hearing that side of things and it was really fun for me to like see that kind of literature on a page versus just watching it. I think she really brought out the emotions in that a lot. So this was awesome. It was so good. So I finished this one and this one was like 600 pages. No, 702. It was 700 pages and number two was about 630. So those two took me about two or two and a half weeks to finish, um, but they were so worth it. And now the, it's kind of technically three and a half since it's just like a mini book um, in the series. This one is about 230 pages, so a lot smaller. And I've noticed that the words are a lot bigger on each page. So yeah, this is definitely a smaller one. I'm about like 30 pages in. So I'll probably finish it in the next couple of days, but I didn't really finish it in January. So this is A Court of Frost and Starlight. Sorry, I didn't say what the third one was. A Court of Wings and Ruin. And yeah, it's just some things that's supposed to be kind of lighthearted and cute. So this one is the lighthearted and cute one after the battles. Great. And then I did also get into audiobooks. So I've been reading a couple audiobooks um, on Audible. I signed up on Audible and then um, Spotify actually now has, if you are a premium member, you get 18 hours a month of listening time. So mine just renewed at the end of the month. So I've started a new book there too. Um, and then if you have a library card or even if you don't, if you have a library near you, you can actually sign up to the Libby app, L-I-B-B-Y, and you can get audiobooks on there. You'll have to wait in line to get them, but I found it pretty easy and I didn't have to wait longer than like a couple weeks for a few of the books. So I was able to read some stuff. So the first one that I read was actually at the end of December and that's Icebreaker by Hannah Grace. And this is about like a love story between hockey player and ice skater. And it's so cute. I really liked that you could have uh, both the guy and the girl's point of view in the audiobook and I think it really made it kind of meld together really well. It also made it more of like a TV show because you're listening as like the uh you're like over both characters and you know stuff that one or the other doesn't know. So that was kind of fun. It was just really cute and there was a lot of sex scenes. So if you don't like that, just skip through it. I kind of skipped through it sometimes because I just wanted to get to like the main part of the story and I didn't really care to hear about it. Also, if I was listening to it like in public, I just felt weird. So I was listening to that one mainly like cooking and going on dog walks. So I kind of would skip it if I didn't want to read that like during a dog walk, but yeah, it was really good. It was nice. I am reading the second one in that series right now. Wildfire, I think is what it's called. And I'm reading it right now. I got that off of my local library. So I'm reading that one right now. And it's so far going pretty well. I'm only like three chapters in though. And then the next book I read is Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood. I really liked how this writer 
right? <laughs> I don't know how to say that any other way, but it is only the, the girl's point of view until like the very end, I think. And it was really nice. It's a chess romance, which I've never really, I've never looked into chess. I've never played chess. I've, I don't know anything about it and I still really enjoyed it. So it was actually kind of fun to go into like this whole new world that I've never thought of before in chess. And it was a lot of fun to kind of immerse myself in learning a different thing that I've never thought about before. So that was cool. It was a nice romance. It, they are younger. I think they were like 18 and 19 or something. Like they're pretty young kids. So there wasn't a lot of spicy scenes. I don't think there was any spicy scene actually. It was very mild. They had a couple makeout scenes and like that's it. But I really enjoyed it because the storyline was super cute and they both had their own like traumas that they were coming coming over and it was just really nice. So I liked that one a lot. I definitely have um, some more stuff from her on my to be read list. But those were the two romances I read and then I also read Girls with Bright Futures by Tracy Dobmeyer. I think I'm saying that right. But that one was also an audiobook for me. And that one, I think I did that one on Audible. And I gave this one like four stars because the end was really good, but it was such a slow, like leading up to the juicy part of the story. But this one is really like a drama um, about kids getting into college and like what their moms have to go through to get them into these like Ivy League schools. It was kind of fun to listen to like stupid, you know, like mom gossip, which was like cute or whatever. But there was some times where she like put in random sex scenes that totally were not necessary and like just skeevy guys. Like, I just don't need to hear about that. But anyways, um, and there is like some trauma in there. They should have like read out the trigger warnings at the beginning of this book, but it's fine, whatever. Um, but the ending was awesome. It was so satisfying. Um, the ending of the story was just absolute gorgeousness. And they gave us like a recap, like a year later, it was perfect. So I really enjoyed it. I liked the, uh, like mystery drama part of it. Um, it just was like such a slow buildup. I think up until like 60% through, I was just kind of like reading it to read it because I knew it would be worth it. It was recommended by a friend. Um, but yeah, the, the first 60% was like, whatever. And then once we got there, I was like, oh, 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 I need to know what's next. I need to know what's going on. So it was good uh, in the second half. But yeah, it was pretty juicy and kind of drama filled. So that was nice. If you like kind of drama um, books, then you'll like that one. But that's everything that I read from December to January. And I definitely plan on continuing reading in February. I'm going to finish the... Um, Court of Thorns and Roses series and then I'm actually going to move on to um Fourth Wing series which it only has two books out so far but I'm going to read those two next I think just kind of get out of the Sarah J Mass world for just a bit and then come back and read Crescent City because I think the third book in that series just came out at the end of January so that's exciting so I'm definitely going to get those in um, hard copies I feel like the um these like fantasy books that I'm going to really enjoy I'm going to get them in hard copies and then or paperbacks whatever and audiobooks i'll just stick to drama and romance because i'm not 100 percent if i'll really enjoy those and those are really easy for me to just listen to while i'm like cooking or doing chores cleaning whatever so yeah that's how i'm gonna do that for next month but anyways that's all my empties in my little book review i hope you guys enjoyed that let me know down below if you want to hear more book stuff from me i could definitely make like separate videos and stuff if you guys are interested I think it's super fun getting into it now as a 26 year old and getting back into reading is just so much fun to me and I'm finding a lot of happiness in it. So yeah, that's everything for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, like, comment, and subscribe down below and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.